In last week's video, I visited Hakka Wood Houses in southern Jiangxi province and told you the story of a special subgroup of Chinese, the Hakka people. This large piece of land in southern Jiangxi province belongs to the municipality of Ganzhou and is regarded as the cradle of Hakka people. It was during this trip I visited the city of Ganzhou for the first time and I immediately fell in love with this city, which had preserved many things from the Song dynasty during the 11th to 13th century. Hello, I'm Yan Yan. I'm in Ganzhou, Jiangxi province. Ganzhou is the only city in China that still has the ancient city wall from the Song dynasty in the 11th century. Today, follow my camera and let's go back to the Song Dynasty. The first thing it preserved from the Song Dynasty is the city wall. I love ancient city walls, but for various reasons, almost all ancient city walls in China have been destroyed. In Beijing, you can only find a very small section of the city wall from the Ming Dynasty 600 years ago. The city wall in Xi'an is the most complete and it's also from the Ming Dynasty. But in the city wall in Ganzhou, there are bricks from the Song Dynasty. The construction of the city wall was even a hundred years earlier than the Song Dynasty. During the late Tang Dynasty, the empire was on the verge of collapse. Uprisings were all over the country. A person named Lu Guangchou also led an uprising and established a state in this region with present-day Ganzhou as capital. He expanded the city and constructed the city wall with rammed earth. It was also during that period, people in northern China and the Yangtze River Delta region migrated to hilly areas in this region in order to avoid large-scale wars in their hometown. During the Song Dynasty, when the government conducted household register, they put these people into guest category, which sounds like Hakka. Ganzhou region became the cradle of Hakka people. From here, Hakka people moved to Guangdong, Fujian, Taiwan, and overseas. But majority Hakka people stayed in this region, and the majority population in Ganzhou is Hakka people. During the Song Dynasty, bricks were laid outside the earthen city wall and became what we see today. Bricks from the Song Dynasty could still be found in the walls, such as this one. It clearly marked the second year of Xining reign, which is 1069. The characters were not engraved, they are raised, they were made when the bricks were mowed. Anyone could engrave the bricks anytime if they want, but these kind of raised characters are difficult to fabricate. These bricks came from different dynasties in the past a thousand years. Some are deteriorated and are not clear anymore. It was such fun looking for bricks with characters in the ancient city wall. The Song Dynasty lost control of the land in the west. As a result, the traditional Silk Road was blocked. Goods were shipped via the ocean between the west and the harbors in the southern coast. The Pearl River Delta, as a result, became an important economic center. At the same time, another economic center was Yangtze River Delta. An important channel connecting these two economic centers was the Gan River, and the starting point of the river is right in Ganzhou. Below the Baijing Pavilion, this is where the Zhang and Gong rivers merged into the Gan River that goes all the way into the Yangtze River. The river in the west is the Zhang River. The river in the east is the Gong River. Two rivers converge at this point and became the Gan River. The Chinese character Gan is the combination of Zhang and Gong, and it's where the name of the city is from, Ganzhou. 
River Gan flows all the way north to my hometown Nanchang, and then it converges into the Yangtze River. Gan, the abbreviation of Jiangxi Province, is from the name of the river as well. Let's take a look at this important route in the Song Dynasty. From north to south, northern China is connected to the Yangtze River Delta via the Grand Canal. Then the Yangtze River Delta is connected to Pearl River Delta through the Yangtze River, the Gan River, the Mei Guan Pass, and the Pearl River. Ganzhou happened to be in this important route. Therefore, in the Song Dynasty, it was among the biggest cities in China. In this ancient map of Ganzhou, there is a pavilion at the confluence point of the two rivers, overlooking the starting point of Gan River. It's the Ba Jing Pavilion. It was built in the Song Dynasty. Speaking of the pavilion by the Gan River, the most famous one is Princeton's Pavilion in Nanchang. Although much smaller and less known, Ba Jing Pavilion is the landmark of Ganzhou, and it's a good place to observe this ancient city. And for me, it has another layer of meaning standing in the pavilion overlooking the beginning of the main river of my home province. I was once standing in Princeton's pavilion overlooking this river as well. Below the Batin pavilion, there is a round structure that reminds me of the Colosseum. Of course, this one is much smaller. This is not a Colosseum in ancient Rome. It's a fort built in late Qing Dynasty against a widely spread rebellion in southern China. The fortress was constructed to prepare for the attacking of the uprising army, but they never came. This place has a really good acoustic effect. Listen. I'm Yan Yan. Subscribe to my channel, Yan Yan from China. From the top floor of the Bajing Pavilion, a bridge kind of thing could be seen on the Gong River. But it's not a normal bridge. It's a float bridge assembled by boats. This float bridge was first built in the Song Dynasty as well. It's clearly marked in the ancient map of the city outside the Jianchun Gate. And this is the gate, not far away from the bridge. During busy season of the river transportation, the bridge would be disassembled to allow big boats to pass. Small boats have their own way to pass, and I witnessed it myself. Not only has the city preserved the ancient city wall and the float bridge, but also the streets from the Song Dynasty. There were six main streets in Ganzhou during the Song Dynasty. Over the past 1,000 years, more streets have been built. But we can still find the original six streets on today's map. They are divided into different sections and are renamed. Some were expanded. Some became small alley, but they're still there. It's so amazing. I went to this section of one of the original six streets. Now it's a small alley. Many of the houses are locked. 
they are too old and are unsafe for habitation. None of the houses were from a thousand years ago. Most of them were from the Qing Dynasty, the last dynasty in China. They're between 100 to 300 years old. I couldn't help but to touch these old windows. These might be from the early 20th century. Houses in the small alley are a mix of Anhui style, Hakka style, and Western style. On the ground, every several meters, there is an ancient coin-shaped thing. What is this? It is the sign of the drainage system built in the Song Dynasty. This is the map of the drainage system. The ditches are all over the city. This is what it looks like inside. The ditch collects sewage as well as rain. The sewage then is discharged into the Zhang River and Gun River via the 12 outlets. Today, a thousand years later, this drainage system is still in use. A small section here is above the ground and the city government built a museum here. Can you guys hear the sound of water? This part is a section of the real ditch. And there are two channels. People still don't understand the theory of the double channel. The system works so well that even during the flood season, when the water level of the two rivers goes up, the city is still flood free. Part of the secret lies in the water gate. Most of the time, sewage goes into the river through the water gate. During flood season, when the water level is above the discharging outlet, the water gate would automatically shut to prevent the water in the river going into the drainage system. There is no automation system a thousand years ago. How did that work? In the museum, there are two real-sized water gates. This is what a water window looks like. It's very simple. It's made of wood. About, um, you can see from here, 10 centimeters thick. And below it, a heavy stone is attached to it. That's what controls the open and close of the window. When the water gate is shut, where does the rain and sewage go? Would the rain flood the city? No. Ganzhou is proud of flood-free for a millennium. Part of the secret is hidden in these pools. They are connected to the ditches. During the flood season when the water gates are shut, the rainwater and sewage goes into these pools. After the flood in the river recedes, the water could be discharged into the river again. There used to be more than 20 pools, big or small, in different places of the city. Today, a lot of them are still there. This one is near the Bajin Pavilion and can be seen from the pavilion. The last piece of the flood-free secret lies in the city wall. During heavy flood season, when the river submerged the river bank, the city wall would act as river levee to keep the water out of the city. What a genius design! And the design of the drainage system is forever remembered by the inhabitants of the city. From all these, we can piece up a very advanced city a thousand years ago. During the Song Dynasty, Ganzhou was way more advanced than Beijing, the current capital of China, which did not belong to the Song Dynasty.
It was under the ruling of two nomadic empires named Kitan and Jin. There is also a water gate in Beijing from the same period, but less sophisticated than the one in Ganzhou. The city wall of Beijing, built 200 years later than the one in Ganzhou, was in rammed earth, not bricks. In the Song Dynasty, the economic centers and the population have shifted southward, and a crisis was hidden behind that. Without Mount Yan in Beijing region as shield, nomadic people easily invaded northern China. They sacked the capital Kaifeng and captured the emperor. Northern China was occupied by the nomadic Zhejiang people. On this ancient map, not far away from the Bajing Pavilion, there is another pavilion located at the highest point of Ganzhou. It's called the Yugu Pavilion. This pavilion is forever associated with a general slash poet named Xin Qiji. When he was an official in Ganzhou, he visited the Yugu Pavilion and composed a poem. In the pavilion, he was looking northwest. That's the direction of Chang'an, present-day Xi'an, the ancient capital of China. It was occupied by nomadic Zhejiang people. Xin Qiji actively engaged in fighting to recapture the lost land, but was not supported by the imperial court. In his eyes, the water in the river was tear. This is Ganzhou, a city where you can physically have a dialogue with the Song Dynasty, a highly prosperous period in Chinese history in terms of arts, economics, and technology but is forever associated with the pain of an incomplete territory.